you're a birder looking to record your sightings, whether it's a big day, a birdathon, or just your daily outings, Birdwatcher's Diary for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch is the software you need. When we open the software, we see a list of the species. In this case, if you look at the bottom, you'll see it's the 828 species of the United States. On the top, we see the location, and we're about to set that because we're going to go birding. So we tap on that, and it's currently Stevens Creek, but we're headed for Palo Alto Baylands. So we tap on P, select Palo Alto Baylands, and we're ready to start. Up pops a mallard. So we tap on M to get to the M birds, tap on mallard, and we're done, ready to get our eyes back on the birds and off the screen of the iPhone. The screen is showing that we have recorded one out of 828 possible species so far. Now, the mallard was easy because it came up on the first screen. How about a wren? Those are a little trickier for reasons you'll see. We tap on W to get down to the W birds, but now there's 80 birds between us and the wrens. We'd, in most software, we'd have to scroll through all those 80 birds. Birdwatcher's Diary, however, includes a unique feature called IntelliScroll, which switches from a one-letter alphabet down the right-hand side to a two-letter alphabet featuring not just the two letters combinations for W's, but also for the letter before and the letter after, in case you miss the correct letter on the first screen, which is entirely possible. So now all that's left for you to do is to tap WR to get quickly down to the wrens, as we're doing here, and then tap house wren, and we're done. What about counting? Here come one, two, three, four common mergansers. Well, Let's just tap M to get to the M's and then ME for Merganser. And now just four quick taps. One, two, three, four, and we've recorded four common Mergansers. What about an even larger group of birds like this group of pelicans? We don't want to have to tap the screen 18 times to register these 18 pelicans. So let's see what we do. Well, we'll just tap P and then PE to get to the pelicans, then tap the pelican once, and now down in the lower right hand corner we tap the calculator button and tap 17 and then the plus button to add 17 more for 18 total. Here's something that seems to justify more than a simple tick an Anna's hummingbird sitting on a nest. Let's make a record of it. As before, we'll tap H and then HU to get to the hummingbirds tap Anna's hummingbird to select that bird and now we're going to tap the binoculars because we're going to add some details. Note that the software has already automatically recorded the date and time of the sighting and the latitude and longitude. We want to add some sighting notes. We could type in a note but it's simpler to take advantage of the built-in list and just tap on in this case sitting on nest to enter that note into our sighting. Tap on show on map we can see where we saw that sighting and then if we want to share this sighting with our friends, tap on the Tweet button, for example. The software automatically created a map that could be shared with your friends and filled in the entire tweet, so you don't even need to write a single thing. Just hit the Send button, and you'll be tweeting all your tweet Twitter followers. The same goes for your birding listserv, where your email message to your listserv will be automatically composed for you, complete with a map. Of course, you can add to that note if you want to. And, of course, you can share the same information with your friends on Facebook. Again, complete with a map and a pre-filled in status update. Hit save and your data is saved. Now we're done for the day and we want to save our sighting, so we go to the file screen, the archive screen, add in some notes about the trip. Tap done in this case. And finally, tap on archive sightings and the data are saved in your iPhone permanently. Because the data are saved in your iPhone, you can recall it as well. Go to the recall screen and there will be tens or dozens or hundreds of your previous trips. Let's tap on one and recall it. The software is switched here to scene only mode where it's only showing us the birds we saw that day, although we can switch back and forth in seconds as we wish. Now there's a new thing on this screen, the ear icon down by Pacific Slope Flycatcher, showing us that we only heard that particular bird. If we tap on that, we can see the herd only. Just like we did before, we can view a map of the individual sighting. But we can also go back to the main screen and pull up a map of all of our sightings. So here we go, 
each pin representing a sighting or hearing of a particular species. So here's a lazuli bunting, over there an ash-throated flycatcher, and down by the pond a mallard and a song sparrow. Now so far everything we've done has been for ourselves. How about getting the data out of the iPhone to the outside world? Let's go to the output screen and here's the eBird screen where we can output the data directly to eBird. Note that the distance of our trip and the duration has been calculated. The observers, however, the software doesn't know that, so we're going to enter two here because there were two of us. Next, we'll click the Report Only as Present tab since we weren't counting birds on this trip, just ticking them off as we saw them. And finally, we'll tap the Direct Upload to eBird button. When we do that, we'll get this preview of the sighting, so we make sure we're uploading exactly what we expect we're uploading to eBird. After we click OK, the software will log into eBird and upload our sightings directly to the eBird site. It's just that easy. Let's talk about lists of species. There are three lists that come installed with the software, as you can see, but if you want more, it's as simple as this to download them. Just switch to the download screen You'll be looking at Stevens Creek software where we have all 50 state lists and dozens of different country lists available. Let's say you're going to Ohio. Just click on Ohio and you'll immediately download the Ohio list, which as you can see consists of just 421 species rather than the 828 species from the full U.S. list. A different kind of list is the life list, and here's how you do that. Tap year or life list and you'll get to set a variety of criteria Let's go from January 1st, 2010 till today for, let's say, only the state of California. And we only want definite species only. We don't want gull species and things like that. And when we tap Create List, we'll see that in that period of time, we've seen 183 different species uh, in the state of California. And here they are. We might then ask the question, well, where have we seen those bufflehead in the last two and a half years? So just tap on the binoculars next to bufflehead to see the details. And we'll see that we've had uh, five different sightings. If we tap show on map, we can actually look at all of those sightings at once and see the different locations where we've seen Bufflehead in the last uh, two and a half years. One on Roop Road on April 2010, and another in Cupertino in January 2011, another at Shoreline Park, and so on. Well, believe it or not, there's lots more to the software, and if you want to learn more, you can go to the Go to our website, you can actually read the full manual, and of course to purchase a copy of the software, you can do that as well. Thanks for listening.